Today, I'm gonna to show you what a tilt shift lens is. If you've been into photography for a while, you may have heard of a tilt shift lens, or you may have seen the tilt shift effect used in cameras on Instagram and other places like that. But this is actually based around a lens you can buy that tilts and shifts, hence the name. First of all, there are two places where you can rotate the lens, and these have click lock points at 30 degree increments. One rotates the tilting section, and the other rotates the shifting section. Then you have the tilting section with measurements, and the shifting section also with measurements. As many of you know, I use Sony cameras, and Sony don't make a tilt shift lens. So I've had to have a Canon adapted one and I've got it on the MC11 Sigma adapter. I have the Samyang tilt shift lens, but Canon do make some fantastic ones, but they are a little bit expensive. So the Samyang is a good cost effective solution. And if you're shooting off a tripod and you're stopping down to F8, the picture quality is fantastic and not that far off the Canon lenses, which are over twice the price. Now, due to the complexity of the lens, they are all manual focus lenses, no matter which one you buy and how much you spend on it. So you will have to utilize your magnify tool to get the focus where you want it. And as there is a lot of manhandling of this lens when shifting or tilting, you really do need to check the focus once you have the lens where you want it. So magnify in and make sure the focus is spot on before taking your next shot. Each of the functions, the tilt and the shift, has a locking dial and a fine tuning dial. So you undo the locking point, you move the lens to where you want it and then lock it into place. On this side of the lens, you can see the levers which release the rotational planes in this lens. And like I've already said, it locks into place at 30 degree increments. So with a little manipulation of each of these settings, you can get it exactly where you want it. As well as using these settings separately, you can actually use them together to create an even more unique looking image. Now I mostly use tilt shift lenses for architectural photography, and they can produce more accurate photographs without sacrificing any pixels. They can also be used to give you that miniature effect, and this works best in time lapses. Now I'm gonna show you how to shoot architecture and how to shoot that miniature effect with this lens. So using the tilt function and the shift function. This is basically where the front of the lens arcs around a center point. When you do this, you alter the plane of focus. As you tilt it more and more, you will get a smaller and smaller part of the image in focus. Now this can produce some really interesting photos and together with turning the focusing dial, you can get that thin strip which is in focus exactly where you want it in the photograph. All you need to do is tilt the lens and then turn the focus dial to get what you want in focus. You may have to recompose the shot a little, but after a bit of practice, you can get some great looking shots. For this effect to work well, it's best to get up high and look down, maybe on a busy junction or an intersection or a walkway where there's either traffic or pedestrians walking around. It's basically as if you're looking down on a miniature model. To accentuate this miniature effect, it's best to shoot a time-lapse. I normally use a one second interval for people walking around a busy area. And if I'm photographing cars, I'll normally do a half a second interval. If you're not sure about time-lapses and interval times, but want to learn more, I've done quite a few videos on this. So look at the link in the corner or the link in the description for more of these videos. Now to get this miniature effect working well, it does take a little time and experience, but when you do get it right, it really does look like a model. It surprised me when I first got a couple of shots that looked really good. When you shift the lens, you move the end of the lens parallel to the plane of the sensor. And this enables you to do a few different things. Let's say you're taking a photograph of a tall building with a standard lens. Normally you'd have to tilt the camera up to fit everything in, and this will make the buildings look as if they're leaning backwards. But with a tilt shift lens, you can get around this. So the first thing you have to do is set your camera so both planes are level. So it's level side to side and it's level front to back. The level screen that's built into most cameras works really well for this. 
And if you don't have that, you can normally get a square bubble float that sits in the hot shoe on the top of the camera. Then all you do is make sure the lens is twisted around the right way. Then if you shift the front of the lens up, you can get the top of the building in the frame. Now, if we look at an image taken with a normal lens and then the tilt shift lens, you can see the second one has much more vertical lines and the building actually looks like it's standing up straight as opposed to leaning backwards. Another way you can use this lens is say if you're taking a photo of something that is too tall or too long for the lens to fit in one frame, then you can take a sequence of shots using this shift function to take the top of the building, the middle of the building and the bottom of the building. So with these buildings, I can't quite fit them in the frame. So all I'm gonna do is set the levels on the back of the camera. Then I'll shift the lens up to get the top of the building in the frame. I'll take a shot there and then I'll shift it down to get the bottom of the building in the frame. Once you have the images back in your editing program with a little bit of stitching, you can have a photograph of the whole building. Just make sure your camera is set to manual mode so the settings stay exactly the same between photographs. The benefit of taking a photograph like this with one of these lenses over just doing a vertical panorama is that the building will appear more vertical. You can also turn the shift function through 90 degrees and shoot a panorama with it. So again, if what you're shooting is slightly wider than your frame, take a photograph, shift it to the right and take another photo. Then shift it to the left and take the third photo. With this technique, you'll end up with a much bigger image than normal. And even though you could take the same shot with a wide angle lens and then crop in afterwards, this way it'll be a much more detailed shot with a much higher megapixel count. And you can also use this in portrait orientation or landscape orientation. There are a few other ways you can use a tilt shift lens, but I just wanted to cover the basics today. Now, have you had any experiences with a tilt shift lens? If you have, let me know in the comments below how you got on with it. And if you're interested in cityscape photography, click on this next video here. And for using a normal lens to create a super wide angle photo, click on this next video down here. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography. I'll see you next time.